Namo Narayan, everybody. This is Sanyasi Shivani coming to you from the unceded territory of the Tanaha Nation and Ishtadev Niwas Ashram. Today, I am going to chat with you for yoga views about the new moon in December. It's December 4th. It is a complete uh, solar eclipse, although the actual eclipse is quite short. It's only about two minutes. Uh, but uh, the new moon solar eclipse, December 4th, it's going to be at 12.44 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And to me, I'm, I'm getting the vibes that this is probably going to be one of the most profound new moons of the year. I've noticed in our videos that our full moon videos get a lot more views than our new moon videos, which I think is quite interesting. Um, but I really hope that you are watching this and that you can share it because this new moon I feel is quite profound. Now, when we're in eclipse season, we had an eclipse on December 19th for the full moon lunar eclipse, which was um, a very long eclipse. It was, it was hours. And eclipses uh, are like, think of them like tuning forks, okay? When you, when you strike the tuning fork, that's an important aspect, when you strike the tuning fork, but it's not necessarily the point of the tuning fork. The point of a tuning fork is the resonance that it can hold afterwards. So eclipses are a little bit like tuning forks. So on the 4th of December, we're going to have a solar eclipse, and that is going to be the striking of this tuning fork. But the resonance of that note, the resonance of that frequency that that solar eclipse is going to bring into our consciousness is going to last for approximately six months, right? So we're going to have this elongated thread of resonance from this solar eclipse right through the next six months, just like we have on the new, on the full moon lunar eclipse on the 19th of December. So there's a lot of resonance happening in the atmosphere, but that's a lot of light because tuning forks are very, very pure in their resonance. So we want to use that energy to tune to, to see where we can let go, to see what's coming in, to calibrate. We can use the eclipses as, and when we use an eclipse to calibrate to we're really using it as a portal because it can we can make big leaps very quickly uh, because we're attuning to the resonance of that eclipse so at the time of the new moon i'm going to go through some details um and of course as not always i don't always say it but i do want to make myself very clear i am a a medium, a yoga teacher, a spiritual guide. I'm not an astrologer, but I do have an absolute passion and love for math and probability and the koshas and the, to me, the planets, the frequencies of the planets are the archetypes of Vijnanamaya Kosha. Okay, and Vijnanamaya Kosha is where is the collective consciousness and the collective karmas are held. So as these planets come in and out of resonance, I've said that word a lot this time, sorry about that. Um, as the planets come in and out of their aspects of whether they are discordant as squares or harmonious with trines or, you know, um, conduits so amplified, you know, as these planets come into the symphony in the sky, what they're doing is they're highlighting a frequency that is a karma that if that resonates with your natal chart, that karma is going to be activated in your reality. And then you have an opportunity to learn, to grow, to heal, to uh, transcend the pull of that resonance because that resonance is a samskara. It's an impression of karma. But when we can transcend that, then we are able to come into a different dimension. And a lot of people like the beautiful 
Pam Gregory, um, the beautiful Bracca Goldsmith, they talk a lot about this new earth. And so from a yoga perspective, from the languaging that I have teach and, and have been taught, this new earth that they're talking about is actually the fifth dimension. And so in our spine, the first three chakras are the third dimension. So we have Muladhara chakra is fear. The portal to the third dimension, of course, is through the womb, which is Swadastan chakra, which is uh, where the samskaras come through in this third dimension. And then we have Manipura chakra, which is where the third dimension tops out at as empowered or power over. And of course, empowered is allows us to come into surrender. That allows us to move dimensional perspectives and come up into the next three chakras, which is Anahat, which is the foundation of love. So if you think of it like uh, like water and ice, they're still to H2O. They're still actually fundamentally the same thing. But love is a fluid representation of it. And uh, trust is an ice or a solid foundation of it. So in the third dimension, we experience H2O as ice, something solid, cold, very hard to move, very hard to you know, change the manifestation. Whereas when we have the foundation of love, it is a much more fluid expression of light, but the essence of it is the same. So faith in the foundation of the third dimension is the same thing as love as the foundation of the fifth dimension. They're not different things, but we relate to them differently as like the same way we would relate to a block of ice differently to a warm shower. Okay, we're going to have two different expressions of it. So then what is fear? Fear is the absence of faith and trust. And then what is the opposite of love? That is attachment. And attachment is birthed out of control, which is power over, which is drops it down into the third dimension. It's an entire big topic. I'm not going to go into it too much more, but I just wanted to give you a context of my exploration of astrology from a yogic perspective is the way that these planets are highlighting the karmas and the sanskars, the archetypes that are activated, right? And so the planets that we deal with, right? Um, the planets that we deal with usually within our natal charts are really, um, I think a lot of them are very, um, very anchored within the third dimensional perspective. And a few of them transcend the third dimension. But then there are other planets that are just that are starting to come into our awareness, just starting to come into our day to day reality and consideration that are actually fifth dimensional um, you know, perspectives. Uh, it's a huge topic. It's a topic I'd live for. It's a topic I love. Um, it's not a topic I can cover all in one yoga views. <laughs> so we, we shall carry on. So at the time of this new moon, okay, um, of course, with a new moon, the moon and the sun are, are, are equal. That's what makes it a new moon. And this is at 12 degrees and 22 minutes of Sagittarius. Now, fun fact, 12 degrees and 22 minutes of Sagittarius is actually the exact ascendant of America. Okay, so it's going to be a real instant snapshot of who are you? Okay, and this is what we are going to see strike on the 4th of December and resonate out for this next six months. Okay, um, then we have uh mercury the moon sun south lunar node and vesta all conjunct in sagittarius and what does sagittarius mean sagittarius is looking for truth is looking for freedom is looking for justice uh not justice is in the law like like uh libra but justice as in right relationship right? Things to come into right relationship. Belief system, ideals, uh, idealism. So Sagittarius is very um, idealized. And of course, this is going to have a huge um, connection to Neptune at this new moon, because Neptune is all about belief and Neptune is in Pisces and it's home in Pisces right now, which is the dream. 
So Neptune and Pisces with all of this conjunct in Sagittarius. And of course, this conjunct is making a square with Neptune and Pisces. Um, we're going to look, I think, at a heightened experience of illusion and delusion versus true connection to the divine versus, um, you know, distortion and, and, and mental, mental health, the mind um, of what is reality and what is fake. Uh, and so these are going to be very, very important things to ask yourself. And I'm not saying this is, you know, to broadcast all over Facebook and, you know, be a troll. I'm not saying that. Never be a troll. Um, but what I'm saying in the pursuance of truth is always to self. Our reality is the relation of this moment to self. This is what creates our reality. And my reality in truth of my reality can be very different to the truth of your reality. But truth is the little t truth, not the truth. And the ego likes to confuse these two. We like to think of my truth as the truth. And as soon as you're saying my, you do have an aspect of ego in there. And that means that you're working with a little t truth, which has validity. It, it is your reality, right? And the reality is we need shelter, we need food, we need blessings, we need compassion, we need understanding, we need hope. This is the reality. But I'm not talking about universal truth because within the universal truth, there is no me. There is no my, there is no mine. And so I think if we can get a little clearer on our languaging into my truth, especially when we're dealing with Neptune and belief and Sagittarius, connect to your reality, what resonates with you, what is your little T truth, and honor that as a sovereign being of light that can connect into the matrix of a whole, that is connected into the matrix of a whole and has a role to play and has a duty and has a part. And that part is important and that part is valid, but it is not more important or more valid than any other thing alive. Not ant, not tree, not president, not anything. Right? So a deep searching for what do I believe, what resonates as harmonious, loving, kind, generous within my being? What beliefs do, do I identify with that make me a better person? What beliefs that I hold on to that brings up anger, brings up wounding, brings up abandonment, brings up ill feelings, brings up gossip, brings up drama. Those are the beliefs you want to weed out. And this is the time to do it. We're here. It's beautiful. Okay. So um, there's a couple of times, there's like three times in this two week period between the new moon and the full moon um that are going to have like real echoes of are we learning are we on the right path are we doing our work and i'm very excited about this oh, um that there is uh two three days two days you know two really important um times in the next couple of weeks when the frequencies are a deep breath reprieve um so uh the actual new moon for our lessons in our work. We're looking at the 4th of December. Okay. And this is all around the, the belief and all the things I've just talked about. Okay. But if we can do this work right, if we can get this resonance accurate, 
okay? Then on the 8th of December, when the moon reaches Saturn in Aquarius, we're going to see, is the collective learning its lesson? Okay, is the collective learning its lessons? As and we are part of this collective. So if we all learn our lessons, then the resonance will be one of grace and of ease and of support and of connection and of Sangha community, yeah? So this is on the 8th. And then on the 15th of December, when the moon reaches uh, Uranus in Taurus, okay? This is going to echo back to the 8th because of this Uranus-Saturn square, okay? Now, this Uranus-Saturn square is coming up to its exact alignment on Christmas Eve, 24th of December, okay? So this is really what we're working with. Think of it like this. Uh, yeah, anybody, anybody been uh, cold water dipping? Okay, this this whole time of the Saturn Uranus square, it's like dipping our toe in the in the cold river. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, this is what it's gonna take. Okay, this is all right. Reset the mind. Okay, half the foot in. That was cold, right? Like, what what are we learning? What do we need to change? Where's the my mind? Where's my perspective? Where's my values? What do I need to recalibrate to? Okay, ankle in. All right, here we go. We're still working with this energy. Blah 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 blah. Christmas Eve dive we're there let's go it's 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 what we have been preparing for okay and there's a, it's sandwiched though okay so it's like we have this really really intense alignment of all of this lessons that we've been learning for over a year with this Saturn Uranus square um coming into its exact alignment on Christmas Eve uh but at the same time, we've got uh, Venus, thank you, Rom. Venus in Capricorn. Okay, now Capricorn is top down power over governments, bureaucracy, right? And we're shaking it up with love, all right? We're shaking up this third dimensional paradigm that we're in, which is very uh, Capricorn, okay? And we're shaking it up so that we can come into uh, um, the new energy of the dream of Pisces before we, you know, we come into, um, sorry, Aquarius, before we come into uh, Pisces. Anyway, uh, Capricorn, the love is shaking up Capricorn and it's going to be conjunct with Pluto three times, right? So Pluto is like death and rebirth, new start, reboot, here we are, break it down, build it up. Now, this is not a one day, two minute solar eclipse type thing. This is like a years long thing, which is why we're all adults now, because we agreed to be here. We signed up for this. So we're going to rock it out. Okay. This is what we're here to be the vehicles of allowing our worlds to break down so that a new foundation can be brought in by the next generations, okay? But it's our courageousness of how much can we be non-attached, vairagya, how much non-attachment can we have while being discerning, loving, generous, kind, capable, courageous. This is why we're adults right now, because we have the ability to have everything break down around us without creating more trauma that is going to be passed on to our generations, okay? We as mamas and papas of the next generations, we have this ability to not make this these transits traumatic. They may be very dramatic. <laughs> Ooh, wrong. They may be very dramatic, but they don't need to be traumatic. And the difference is going to be our level of maturity and understanding of what is happening. 
our own minds is going to create the narrative around how we deal with this and how we deal with this is going to be what our next generation has to work with for the new foundation but this is why they have come is to bring in that so let their imaginations go wild let them be free let them dream let them be weird and kooky and they's and we's and like let them be and we can do the work that needs to be done to prepare for them. This is, this is to me, our ultimate act of love. As adults right now, this is our act of love. Okay? So this conjunct, oh, Ram, I digressed. Okay, so this conjunct of Venus, this love shaking up the top downs, okay, is going to be conjunct with Jupiter on the 11th of December. Okay, it's going to be conjunct with Jupiter on the 11th of December. And then again on the 25th of December. So one day after that exact alignment between Uranus and uh, Saturn on Christmas Eve. The next day, boom, Jupiter conjunct with Venus in Capricorn again. And then it's going to come back into conjunction again on the 3rd of March. So December 11th, Christmas Day, 25th of December and the 3rd of March, Venus is going to be conjunct with Pluto in Capricorn. Okay, this is, this is big. This is huge. But love is the only force that can break up the energies that have power over. Okay, and understand you may not be able to fully dream co-creation yet. You may not be able to fully dream um, what it is to live in a world without power over, without a hierarchy. And my direct experience is there are some realities that look like hierarchies that are actually not. So it's really about your perspective and the resonance that is running through the running through the um the collective okay and this is this is a discussion for another day maybe you'll join us on life um because we're having lots of beautiful discussions there i'll put the link in our um in our comments for you to join um if you're watching this after the 4th of December, you get one week free. If you're watching it before the 1st of December, you can get a month free. So I hope you join us soon. It's really, really magical what's happening on there. Um, so this new moon. Okay, I go back to the new moon. Okay, the 4th of December is echoing through the 8th of December with Saturn. And then again on the 15th of December with Uranus. And this is all about the Saturn-Uranus square, which comes exact on the 24th of December. Okay, and then again, there's aspects of this new moon on the 4th of December, namely the trine, right? The, the trine three frequency of spirituality um, between Karen, which is health, uh, and it's very in much in harmony with Saturn, this trine. So, and Karen is health. So think, you know, it's not just physical health, although that's very important, as we have all learned in the last couple of years. Uh, but it's also relationship wealth. It's also financial wealth. It's also health, sorry. Um, so it depends on your natal chart, where your Charon is, that you will know where your health is is going to be able to come into balance here using the wisdom and the karmic lessons of Saturn to bring this in. And if we have learned that, if we can bring this resonance of this eclipse into using it to learn our lessons and come into health, then on the 12th of December, when the moon reaches Charon in Aries, uh, we will we will we will feel we'll be able to feel that echo of like yeah i got that one right yeah okay i'm healthy you know maybe you have a test done on the fourth and you get the results on on the 12th you know that you will you will feel a um an echo 
between these two dates of the 4th and the 12th, okay? There's a lot of information in here, um, and I've only touched on very small aspects on all of it, um, but I'm really, really uh, just so joyful that we're here, right? So joyful that this is this is why we came. This is why you're listening to this right now. If you're listening to this right now, there is you may not know or understand completely everything I've just spoken about, but you will remember. Okay? You can remember and that is what we're here for. We're here to remember. And this is the truth. You know, somebody asked me the other day about uh they said uh, uh something very kind towards me and i mentioned that it was the mirror uh that they were able to see that aspect of my light because that is the aspect of their light they have within them they may not recognize it but they couldn't see it in me if they didn't have it in them and they asked about transmission what is transmission um and because from our third dimensional perspective we are sort of programmed, I'm going to use the word program, it's kind of a weird word, um, to think of transmission because our lineage, the Saraswati lineage from our ashram in India is a transmission lineage. Um, for those who have not experienced, it sounds completely woo-woo. I understand that. I completely agree with you until you've experienced it. And then you understand that it's not woo woo it's actually reality and it is it is real and it is beautiful and it is full of grace um but uh, we're kind of programmed to think of transmission as something uh so a, a stream of resonance from a being who has embodied that resonance being passed to you like you never had it but everything is inside of us. The, the knowledge and the wisdom of how to do open heart surgery is inside of me. Now, in this reality, would I go and cut somebody open and do it? Absolutely not, because I don't remember. But that doesn't mean that the, the knowledge is not there. It means it has not been woken in me. And it would be woken up in me by going to medical school, by entraining to the knowledge and of, of the doctors that have remembered and have practiced and have brought that body of energy into this realm by actually doing the open heart surgery, right? So you go to, you go to yoga, not yoga, you go to medical school and you learn from the teachers, right? And you think because you're identified with this third dimension that you are intellectually learning it, but it is already inside of you. And I am assuming that when you're in the presence of a doctor who has skill and who has beauty and has been touched by that grace of being able to help people on that level, that there is a spark in your heart. I want to do that too. Yeah. And that spark is grace. It says, yes, you should learn to remember this. You should learn to ignite this body of wisdom that is inside of you. And it is the same with spiritual work. It is the same with soul uh, soul medicine, right? When you have a teacher, or if you are lucky enough to have a guru, somebody who is a master of embodying the soul while in the mitsu, then when you see them at work, when you're in their presence, something sparks inside of you. Not to be the guru, not to be the teacher, but to have the skill to have the skill that can hold the space for healing, that understands what they're doing enough, maybe not with a heart, but with a soul, to help that person remember how to heal. And so when that transmission comes, 
that transmission is not something that is from them to you as though it is outside of you. It is a frequency that touches you and ignites what is already there. I hope this is making sense. Because to experience a transmission of grace is, an ex to me, the moments, the, the few times that I have experienced it, which I'm not going to go into, is, to me, being an ascendant Pisces, the dreamer, um, are, to me, embodied hope. That's, that's what, to me, experiencing the transmission of experiencing the mastery and exquisite uh, resonance within another being that is in the meat suit, that is in this reality, but not of this reality. And the beam of frequency that they send, the transmission that they send ignites what is inside of me, but it ignites in a way that is like a tune and fork, Ooh, full circle. It's like a tune and fork where you instantly remember. And this is why it's a transmission because you instantly understand. You instantly, like you have never forgotten it, like you could just go and do open heart surgery. And because that resonance, that embodied resonance is already there. And it's just, it's lit up. It's sparked open in you. And it, to experience it, a transmission like that, to me, is embodied hope. To me, it shows that, yes, even in the density of the Kali Yuga, even in the density of this reality, in this reality of corruption, lies, fake news, power over, you know, even in that reality, when you are able to hold your mind and your heart at a resonance that is not identified or attached with that reality, then the frequency of love and of hope and of blessings and of grace of from another world can still be anchored here can still be embodied here and can still be awakened here and this is is where we are and it's here the frequencies are here we need to understand it's not we are groveling on the floor asking to be worthy this is old paradigm thinking it's acknowledging everything is inside of me i just need to remember and i need to remember how to tune to that resonance and the fastest way of tuning to that resonance is to be in the presence to be in the presence of a teacher, to be in the presence of a master, to be in the presence of the music, to be in the presence of the light with a humble heart that says, I am recognizing the opportunity that is here. I want to remember. Please help me remember. I offer my heart to the truth, the big T, truth so that i can remember so this is the new moon to me i think it's going to be the new moon of remembrance the eclipse is directly over new zealand and australia this is where they may feel a lot of sudden shift the strike of that eclipse the whole world will bomb and bask in its resonance but that thread will feel the strike the shadow of the eclipse is said to uh, come from California up the west coast now 
being somebody that's lived in Vancouver, somebody that lives in Western Canada, if anybody mentions anything to me about something threading from California up Western Canada, there's only one thing that I think of. Namo Narayan. And um, so to all my brothers and sisters that live on the coast, please take care. Um, and make sure you listen to the resonance of your heart. And yeah, me is no longer an option. It is only we. We are Namo Narayan.